Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at solutions for positive externalities of production. We're going to look at two solutions in this video. We applied the example of education as a positive externality of production, that the production of education services by schools uh, leads to spillover benefits to society. And one example of that spillover benefit is highlighting how a more educated workforce is a more highly skilled workforce leading to increased production, GDP, GDP per capita income within that particular society or nation. And so we see that strong correlation illustrated here. We're measuring the mean years of schooling on the x-axis and the GDP per capita income on the y-axis. And we see that countries that have lower mean years of schooling have lower per capita income, whereas the uh, level of schooling rises, the per capita income rises. And this is a, um, you know, a, almost a proven fact in economics that when nations invest in education and healthcare services, it leads to a more productive and healthier workforce. And as a result, GDP rises over time. We'll see this again in macroeconomics when we talk about supply side interventionist policies, the government intervening and making those investments in public education and public health so that their long run potential GDP rises. Okay, so here is our graph illustrating a positive externality of production in the market for education services. And we saw in the previous video that where MPC equals MPB, which is point A, right, at point A, that's the free market equilibrium, or MPC equals MPB, it provides the free market price at PM and the free market quantity at QM. We see that at QM, the marginal social benefit of education or private education is greater than the marginal social cost, right? So there's an under allocation represented by this triangular area here, that's the welfare loss. Society would like more education than what is being provided by the free market. So private education is not enough. And so the government has to intervene. One solution is public education. So solution number one, can be the provision of uh, public education. So we're looking at the government provision of a particular good or service. So this, in this case, it's the provision of public education. So the government will provide, in this case, public education services, All right? So S1 equals MPC, that's private education. And so the distance between S2 and S, S1 and S2 will be the amount of public education that has to be provided by the government to reach the allocatively efficient outcome at point C. So we can add to our labeling that S2 is equal to MSC, which is equal to S1 plus direct government provision. I'm going to shorten that just for the sake of space here. Or I can label it as S2 equal to MPC plus the direct government provision of public education services. So this solution is fairly easy to graph because you're just using your positive externality of production graph, drawing an arrow to show that the government has intervened and is supplying more education through public education so that at S2, it is the sum of the private education plus the public education. Again, where S2 equals MSC, which is equal to the private education at S1 plus the direct government provision of public education, which is equal to the MPC, again, private education, plus the public education. That increase in supply by the government leads to price falling for education because of that increased supply. So it becomes more affordable to households. 
that leads to the quantity demanded increasing along the original demand curve from uh, point A to point C or from QM to QOpt, okay? Thus achieving the allocatively efficient outcome at point C, all right? So that's solution number one. An additional solution is, as we saw when we looked at the previous chapter, looking at government intervention and how we can get the supply curve to shift out. Another way you can get the supply curve to shift out is through a subsidy, okay? So solution number two, in this case, is the provision of an assumed per unit subsidy. All right, solution number two, we're going to look at a the application of a per unit subsidy to private education. Okay, so we're gonna the government will provide funding to private schools to increase their supply curve. And so, what would that look like? All right. So we're gonna take our m uh, positive externality of production graph and then apply a subsidy on top of that solution. Okay, so this is what we're going to get. So we know that subsidies cause the supply to shift out. So as it shifts out, it causes the price paid by consumers to fall. So price will fall for consumers from PM to P-opt, which is equal to PC, price paid by consumer. It will lead to an increase in the price received by the private schools in this case, right, to point, let's say point D. So price received by producers rises from PM to PP, which is price received by the producer. That increases the quantity supply by the private schools along their S1 curve from point A to point D. And so you get an increase in the quantity supplied and demanded for education because price paid by consumer falls, price received by producer rises. And then we see the rectangular area here, which is representative of the amount of spending by the government in providing that subsidy, okay? One last thing we need to add is S2 equals MSC, which is equal to S1 minus the subsidy, which is equal to MPC minus the subsidy. So here we've illustrated solution number two, a per unit subsidy, right? And they, there we're done. We've done two solutions. So I'm going to go ahead and um, analyze the per unit subsidy. I think the government provision is explanatory, right? S1 shifting out to S2. I think that's fairly explanatory. So I'm going to analyze the subsidy graph as we would on a paper exam. As can be seen, we have graph A illustrating the market for education, education being a positive externality of production. We're measuring the price of um, education on the y-axis and the quantity supply and demand of education on the x-axis. We have a downward sloping demand for education equal to D1, equal to marginal private benefit, equal to marginal social benefit. And we have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1 equal to the marginal private costs of private education. We see that in the free market where MPC equals MPB provides a free market price for private education at PM and free market quantity of education at QM. But we notice that at QM, the marginal social benefit of education is greater than the marginal social cost, right? which is the welfare loss we see here at QM. Right? This generates a welfare loss. There's an underallocation of resources to the production and consumption of education. Society would like more education than, than, is, than what is being provided by the free market. So the free market has failed to provide that amount of education that's desired by society. So that requires that the government intervenes. One solution for that government intervention is the government providing that education. So we can have the supply curve shift out from S1 to S2. And although it's not labeled here, we would label S2 equal to MSC, which is equal to 
um, S1 plus the government provision, which is equal to NPC plus the government provision, that increase in supply of public education in addition to private education would lower the price paid by consumers from PM to POP and increase the quantity demanded from point A to C along the demand curve D1 or increase quantity demand from QM to QOPT. That's one solution. An additional solution is the government providing a per unit subsidy to private schools. And that subsidy would have the effect of shifting the supply curve outward from S1 to S2, which would be equal to MSC, equal to S1 minus the subsidy, also equal to MPC minus the subsidy. That has the effect of reducing the price paid by the household from PM to POP, which is equal to price paid by consumer, PC. That lowered price would increase the quantity demanded from point A to point C, or from QM to QOPT leading to increased consumption of education services. In addition, the price received by private schools would increase from PM to PP. That would lead to an increase in the quantity supplied of private education services from point A to point D or from QM to QOPT. Thus, the social optimum level of output is achieved as a result of the provision of that per unit subsidy to private schools. Okay, so there we go. We have two solutions for solving a positive externality of production. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and uh, don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.